Sometimes in this hobby you don't have time to film everything at night. Especially if you do something for the first time. Most of you probably heard the news about the comet. And I'm sure I was able to catch the last moments of that beautiful piece of rubble. Let me show you how I photographed Comet Atlas. The setup for a comet is not really different from the typical deep sky rig, but there's one thing you have to keep in mind. Even with star tracking, the comet will wander out of the frame sooner or later. Some of these comets are very fast and some of them are rather slow. If you have one of those faster ones that will wander out of the frame very soon, you have to track the comet with PhD, not the stars. PhD2 has a comet tracking feature and you can take the movement rates out of Stellarium. Luckily for me, this comet is a rather slow one. I was able to track the stars and the comet just moved a tiny bit during maybe 3 hours. And therefore I was able to create a stack for the background sky and a stack for the comet and blend them together. Alright, first move to Comet Atlas. Let's see if he's still there. I think there's a small wispy cloud right there where it should be. Let's see. Come on, please be there, please be there. Comet Atlas, here we go. Let's see if the news were right. Three, two, one. I think it's right there. It's pretty dark. It's so hard to see. I think this little spot here is it. Let's fire up PhD and get some longer exposures on this one. How much did it wander in two minutes? Not that much apparently. The stars are amazingly sharp. There are so many of them. But look at this, it's really falling apart. Alright, I will go for two minute subs. The dither is running. Let's get the best out of this comet. Alright everybody, welcome to the present, I suppose. I caught about 120 two minute subs, a span of about maybe three to four hours. The comet moved a tiny bit and I will show you it right now. We can go... Let's blink through these subs I've caught. It's in this photo. You can see I've d tried many things also with APP. The lights are right here. The first thing we have to do is to first align, create basically a typical integration just with the stars aligned. So the stars registered on top of each other. That's the first thing. And then we can use the comet alignment tool in Pixinsight to get a good sharp image of the comet and then blend these two together. But let's see how much this comet wandered actually and I think, I think I caught the disintegration. It, it's maybe not that uh, visible but, and the moon was also coming out at that point but look at this, it's here right now. And I think the images are gonna jump, images are gonna jump because of dithering, yes. So it's not really visible right here, you can see it's jumping around a lot. So the first things we have to do is, of course, calibration, image calibration. We have to cosmetically correct them, we have to debayer them and then star align them. 
I have the explaining Pixel Insight tutorial running parallel to this video. If you want to know how all these steps work I just uh, mentioned, check those out. I already did all of these steps and the final star stack looks like this. After some editing, the background modelization is the second part of the explaining Pixel Insight series. It looks something like this. And you can see the comet is of course elongated because it's stacked and it moved. But you can see some of these pixels are behaving weird. I think that's because some of the rejection algorithms I used, the linear fit clipping, removes everything that doesn't behave. It compares two images and if there's one thing that's not supposed to be there, it removes it and I think something happens right here. And you can see that this remove trail gets smaller. I think it's big, on the, it's big on the beginning because the comet core may be a bit more compact and it may detect it as a thing to remove and it gets smaller in the end. Maybe the nucleus broke up. But that's this image and now I have this integration of the comet and after some background modelization I, this is the mask, I ended up right here. This looks pretty good to begin with. Look at this comet. The steps I did here we have... I used the debayered files. I went through the calibration, cosmetic correction and debayering. And then I did not use the star alignment. Let me show you. The process is right here. It's the comet alignment. I will add my light frames which of course should be um, calibrated and corrected and debayered, but I just want to show you the principles of how it works. We will open the first frame, stretch it, and click on the comet right here. That's not it. And if Pixinsight does not detect the comet, we have to go for it manually. Can't I move this? And I can move it by pressing Control. I will mark the comet on the first image. And on the last, you can see this image is a lot brighter because of the moon. So it's right here. I will choose the output directory. And then Pixinsight will you click apply global and Pixinsight will align all of these. And you can after that take them and integrate it integrate them into a final image. And this image integration I will just show you the the settings I use. I think I have the... these are the comment aligned files. I use basically all of the 124 frames and I used a little bit less for the star stack integration because the moon was out. Normalization is... these are the basic values. I used a tiny bit of weightening for the noise. The rejection algorithm now, since the stars are moving um, since the stars are moving now, the rejection algorithm can edit most of them out because they are not behaving the way they should be. But to do that more properly, we can the linear fit high, we can decrease it to maybe 1.5 to get rid of more stars. So we only have the image of the comet and maybe a smooth background. And that was this image right here. I edited both of these images a tiny bit more and the final blend was in Photoshop but it can also be done in Pixinsight. I will leave a link to a video I found about blending these images down below and you can go there and, and check it out. The process is was somewhat time consuming, I didn't get it right and that's why I don't really want to show you maybe misleading or false information. But this was Tons of fun, this comet looked amazing and I'm very, I've reached, I've read the news on Twitter just now that it's supposed to be gone now, maybe just a pile of dust. It's really sad but it was a ton of fun to photograph this one and to share it with you. So I think this will be all for this video. My name is Tim, I'm an astro addict, I wish you clear skies and may the night be with us.